Guys. This microphone isn't new. I've seen this before. Like years ago, I've seen this microphone before. Let me, let me prove it to you. One quick thing, real quick, I unboxed this white one live on my YouTube channel, my personal channel, youtube.com slash Harris Heller. So if you missed that, subscribe to that channel to see more stuff like this. All right, check it out. White microphone, black microphone, Discord DM from 2019. I'm serious. Obviously, I'm not gonna show you the whole DM. Check it out. October 2019. Side by side. <laughs> the Go, it's, it's the GoXLR mic. This is a DM with the original GoXLR team, who is now the Beacon team. They showed me, I'm, I, got a, I got receipts. Here's another one, here's the white one. And here we go, with prototypes from December of 2019. So here's what I'm thinking happened, by the way. So this was being worked on when the original GoXLR team still worked at GoXLR they started working on a microphone and then they left and they started their own company called Beacon. What I think happened, because I remember a couple months ago seeing like GoXLR tweet out these microphones out of nowhere and I was like, whoa, what is happening here? What I think happened is like two years after these guys left, TC Helicon goes and like, oh, we should probably clean out their office. What is this? They open a drawer and they find the GoXLR microphone. They're like, this is our IP. It's a finished microphone. There are prototypes. Let's ship it. <laughs> and by the way, disclaimer here, um, it's funny. There's nothing wrong with this at all. Like they were working on TC Helicon's dime. This was their IP. Like, yes, TC Helicon owns the designs and everything to these mics 100%. There's no, <laughs> no ill will going on here. So, so no canceling TC Helicon for this, because I know like me sharing the story is going to be people like, you stole a microphone. That's not what happened. They own this microphone. It's fine. It was just funny that they left TC Helicon. I never heard of the project again. Like I was on calls with these guys about the design and like what my priorities were. Like I helped, I helped in a very minuscule way. I, I helped make this. And now it just, became, it just became a thing. I thought it was so funny. Um, anyway, let's open these up. Let's see what they look like. Let's see how they sound. Um, let's compare them to some comparable microphones because these go for, I feel like, have I not given a good intro? This is the Go XLR microphone. Comes in black and white, goes for $150, which means it competes with things like uh, the Rode Pod Mic, which is $100. Um, maybe the Shure MV7X, which is just the XLR only version of their microphone, no USB, which is $150. So we'll definitely put it up against those two microphones. Let's also put it up against the SM7B, just because that is a baseline. This is what a good dynamic mic sounds like. And then we can see how close to it these are. All right. All right, let's jump into it. Hey, how many of you guys noticed that lower third that we used earlier? Here it is. <laughs> that we used earlier in the video. I thought I thought it looked nice. I thought it would spice things up a tiny bit. It was also made by the sponsor of this video, Visuals by Impulse, and it took me like 15 seconds to set up. Let me show you. So the lower thirds are part of a tool they have called Super. And you can see they have a ton of stuff down here, but we're gonna focus on the lower third section right here. They have a bunch of brand new designs they just launched. I used the Pixel one that you're looking at right here. You can see they have a regular version and then they also have a version with the social media icon on it. And that's what I wanted to use for this. So I type in my YouTube username. I pick the social media platform I'm looking for. I'm gonna use YouTube. I pick the color of the logo, which I'm gonna go with red, and the color of my text, which I'm gonna go with white. And then I download an MOV because I'm putting this in a video. And that's the whole thing. It's super easy, they look fantastic. And this kind of stuff makes it so much easier to share extra information. Like if you're a Twitch streamer, you can let your YouTube audience know exactly where you stream with a very beautiful lower third. Plus it's super affordable. You can get these as low as $2. And then if you're browsing their store and you find anything else you like, like they make a bunch of widgets. For example, this chat ID chat box widget, you can get 20% off by using code senpai or just use the link in the description below that'll automatically make any of those things 20% off. Pick up some stuff to make your streams and YouTube videos pretty. Back to the video. All right, let's unbox these, let's open them up, let's see what they look like, see how they feel, and then uh, let's compare them to those microphones. Let's start with the white one. So this one, as I mentioned before, we unboxed on my stream, which is why I've already swapped out 
the red piece. Like it comes with the rose gold and the white, which is a, actually a really nice combo. I'm a fan. So we got the microphone, which is a very hefty feeling microphone. Like this mic feels very solid. Not just the microphone itself, but like the hinge, everything about this. Actually the hinge feels a little bit heavier. <laughs> than the microphone, which is an interesting choice, but still feels like a very sturdy microphone. I'm actually, I'm a really big fan of the design. When they first sent me the pictures, I saw this and I thought it was like this big. The picture made it look like it was a very, very small microphone. I was like, oh, that's gonna be obnoxious. Uh, I was very wrong. This is, a, this is a beefy boy. And it comes with, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 different colors of these rings. Like it looks like it just comes standard with all these. You don't have to pay for any extra ones. They're all like a very nice, like matte finish. And they're also, other than the red one, none of them are like neon colored. They're all very, uh, I would say muted maybe, maybe not muted. Like there's definitely some color there, but they're very like pastel-y, which is really nice. At least most of them are. And the way you change them is you unscrew this back part here. Maybe you should also take off the, the little cust the built-in pop filter, which is nice, by the way. Built-in pop filter. Uh, I spoke with the guys again after this was released, and they told me there is a built-in pop filter inside of this, and also one that comes with it. So if you don't want this, if you want to like eat your mic like a lot of streamers do, you are welcome to take this off. There is one built in here, but getting double the pop filter is kind of nice. Okay. You pull this off through here, and then you just swap these out however you like. So this is how it comes with that white and gold look, which is a nice look. Like I wanna go with the Senpai one, the Senpai colors, but I also really like this one. This one's, the one it comes with, by the way, is metal, which was interesting when I opened it up, because I thought they were all gonna be metal. The one that it comes with is the only metal one. The rest of them are painted plastic, which bummed me out at first, but it comes with 10 of them. If they tried to make 10 metal rings and you were only gonna use one, I, I mean, it probably would have brought this price up to 200 bucks, maybe even more, just for excess rings that you weren't gonna use. So considering they're painted really well, that's a nice matte finish. I thought they were metal until I touched them so your audience isn't gonna know the difference. I think going with plastic and giving you more options is actually the right play. And then keeping the price where it's at rather than bringing the price, you know, making them all metal and bringing the price up. I think it was the right balance. Here we go. Look at all these colors. How will the white on white look? Is that just gonna be super clean or is it gonna be super boring? Let's see. It's not the worst. What's also gonna be a nice look? I think as a Twitch streamer, having like the purple one, oh. Purple's a good color. Let's keep it as purple the rest of the video. Black one. So this is the one I haven't opened yet. You can see it's still all nice in the packaging. Let's see how this bad boy looks. So an interesting thing about this, when I first got sent the prototype pictures of all this, I was told what the pricing, what pricing they were aiming at and I was told that there's like no way we can get it below 170. Like that's definitely what we're aiming for. Uh, maybe 170 to 200. And then this came out and it's 150, which started a conversation again between me and one of the Beacon guys who was the designer of this. And they said, I wonder if they just found a way to manufacture it cheaper, which is very unlikely, you know, with today's supply chains and everything, or if they may have swapped out some components with some cheaper components, which is why we need to do an audio test on this and see if it sounds semi-decent. I also wanna do a plosive test with this pop filter. If you don't know what a plosive is, by the way, it's kind of what it sounds like. It's the, the P, it's when you have a, a quick burst of air, plosive. <laughs> I don't think plosive's a verb. Plosive towards your microphone, you get those heavy like, right? So I want to do one of those tests, see how it sounds without the pop filter, see how it sounds with the pop filter. But I gotta be honest, this this is like gunmetal black. I thought it was gonna be like black black, which is what it looks like on here. But I'm a big fan of this color. This is a, like a gunmetal gray and it looks awesome. What color should we throw on here? Real quick, black and what? Black and yellow? All right, we got the metal one, the metal silver one that's already on there. Let's throw on this yellow one here. I gotta say, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but I don't know if you want, like some streamers are gonna want the cool little X, the GoXLR logo showing. Some of them are not. 
and I'm glad they didn't put the logo on both sides. It's a little thing, may have been a mistake, but I'm glad that you can have a completely blank side pointing towards the camera. Watch me say that in this video and they're like, oh, we gotta fix that, we gotta put it on both sides. If they do that, I'm sorry. Dude, I gotta be honest, that black and yellow is absolutely a winner. <laughs> All right, let's plug these in, let's try them out. All right, let's get started. All right, so here's how this is gonna work. We got our microphones, I'm talking into the Go XLR mic. I picked purple, the light purple. I thought it looked nice. And we've got our Shure SM7B, we got our Rode Pod mic, which is $100, and then we got the MV7X. It's actually the MV7, but we're just gonna use XLR, and it'll be like the MV7X. And all of these are gonna be plugged into the Go XLR. I figured it was appropriate, since we're testing the Go XLR microphone. Also, most streamers are using a Go XLR, so it made the most sense. In order to make this fair, let's use the same phrase across all the different microphones. Let's say something like, I don't know, um, Stream Beats is the number one copyright free music for all your live streams and your YouTube video needs. It's available on all your favorite streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube Music. So make sure you go check it out at the links down below or go to streambeats.com. Stream Beats is the number one copyright free music for all your live streams and your YouTube videos. It's got 16 genres and over 1500 tracks, so there's music there for everybody. Go check them out at the link down below or go to streambeats.com. Streambeats.com is the number one copyright free music for all your live streams and your YouTube videos. Did you know that over a quarter of a million people use Streambeats every single month and not a single person has ever gotten a DMCA strike? Makes sense to me. Check them out at the links down below or go to streambeats.com. Streambeats.com is the number one copyright free music for all your live streams and YouTube videos. One thing I forgot to mention, did you know it's completely free? Totally free to use. Look it up on Spotify, there are a bajillion playlists. Use it in the background of your live streams and it's totally free to use. Check them out at the links down below or I'm just, I'm never gonna stop plugging this. <laughs> Every microphone video is gonna be the way it is. All right, now real quick, let's do the plosive test on this with this handy little shock mount it comes with. How good is this thing? Shock mounts are to protect you from plosives like P's and T's and P's and T's and P's and T's and P's and T's. Shock mounts are meant to protect you from plosives like P's and T's and P's and T's and P's and T's and P's and T's. This microphone sounds really great. <laughs> like way better than I expected it to. It's, it of the three other than the Shure SM7B, I would say the one that sounded most similar to the Shure SM7B was the Go XLR mic. And like it wasn't really close. Like there were two mics that sounded similar to me. Two mics that sounded relatively flat and that was the Shure SM7B which is notorious for being a very flat frequency response. That way you can use it in the studio. You can color it later, right? It gives you all the frequencies. This was also a very flat one. It felt like it had the presence, the low end that the Shure SM7B did. Whereas the Rode and the MV7 felt a little bit thinner. I like their sounds, they're not bad sounds, but in these mics, there's definitely a, a little bit of a sharper high and mid, right? Like right in that area at the top of where your vocal, like where the voice is, it feels like it's embellished a little bit too much and it feels a little bit sharper. These two, the SM7B and the Go XLR mic, were the smoother ones out of it with a little bit more low end presence. This one felt like it had a little bit more low and a little bit more high with the mid scooped out a little bit, which is what you kind of end up doing to this one, right? You don't want those muddy mid tones. So after you plug this into a device, you kind of scoop it out a tiny bit and it sounded like that had already been done just a little bit to this one and I didn't hate it. I gotta say, I'm really impressed. And I'm also really impressed by the pop filter. I mean, I was giving some pretty solid plosives. And you can hear between the two tests, like I wouldn't use this microphone without the pop filter. It, it made quite a big difference. And some of the plosives were really noticeable in the second test after I took this off. So I would definitely keep it on, but it did a pretty good job and it's out of the way. It's not this big around like most pop filters were, but it did a really good job. But like it's, it's only 150 bucks and it checks off two of my most important things for a dynamic microphone. One is the sound. I mean, I, it just, it sounded good. Do you disagree with me? Do you think it's a, like if you listen to that, if you listen to that test with headphones on, which you should do by the way, if you're watching on your phone or just on terrible laptop speakers, you're not gonna notice much of a difference. But if you listen with headphones, what did you think about them by the way? Do you agree with me? I'd love to hear your thoughts below. But 
Oh, and while you're down there, hit the like button. If you haven't done that yet, what's the matter with you? Hit the like button. But it sounded great. And again, this is marketed towards streamers, live broadcasters, right? And where that bar is, all of these microphones are above that bar, right? They're all gonna sound good on stream. But this one sounded kind of the best out of the budget microphones that I've got here. So that's checkbox number one. Checkbox number two is style and how it looks. And this is a beautiful microphone that is, I just think it's funny that since the prototype pictures that they sent me three years ago, I'm sure they just found the microphone plans in that office and they're like, oh, let's push this. And they just sold it as is because the guys did a great job. They really did. It, it looks great. They've got black and white options and you have a customizable color ring and they give you 10 different colors. So it's personal as person, person, personalizable. My brain just died. Personalized, personalizable, personalizable. That sounds wrong. I'm gonna go with it though. I mean, now that I realize how much I like it, I need to do a test for myself between this and the beacon mic. Because if this sounds better than the Beacon mic, then it's like, okay, well, what do I do now? I don't want to give up the Beacon ecosystem. I love the Beacon software, but I really like this mic. Beacon needs to put out an XLR interface. Let me put this on your system, because that would be my dream setup, all right? That's the plan. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't hit the like button yet, again, please do so. If you have any thoughts on the microphone, leave a comment down below. If you don't have any thoughts, uh, just leave an emoji. Leave your favorite emoji. Start a conversation with emojis. That's always fun. I hope you found this useful. Let me know down below if you plan on purchasing one of these yourself. And if so, what color combination are you going to use? Anyway, have a good one, guys. And as always, happy streaming.